Hello and uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning to students in the online platform, offline platform. Welcome to today's class. And uh, as you can see, what we were discussing in the last class, I think uh, it's right there in front of me, what we were discussing. Just have a quick recap. We were uh, discussing how to find out uh force uh when the energy function is given to you if the energy function u is given to you how do you find out uh, the force from that energy function up till now uh, as far as i remember there is not uh, even a single question that has come straight away in this from this topic but uh, you never know uh, it can definitely come now if it is a three dimensional force uh, that question will definitely belong to the JE advanced category. It will not come in JE mains at all. So this, this is beyond the scope of JE mains. So the example that uh, we had discussed in the previous class, uh, particularly this example, wherein uh, we had a uh, energy function of the form x square y plus uh, y z. Uh, this question is definitely in the category of uh, J advance and it can never come in J means because it's just beyond their reach. But you can see, I mean, even if it's a, yes, you're audible beta. You can hear me also? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, but uh, a question of this category, as you can see, which lies in the J advance uh, range, uh, is very easy to solve and I, I keep on telling you always and remember that that uh, no question in JE advance has ever come that cannot be solved in the classroom the only thing is uh, you will find that the question might be uh, somewhat new somewhat new in the sense that uh, they are obviously not going to repeat the same question that has already come so it will be new in that respect but but, 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 and it's important, but if you pay attention in the class and do what is required, you just do the questions that we are doing in the class to just solve the DPPs. I think you will be in a good space to clear JE mains and set for JE advance. Now, in today's class, what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and see what all... Uh, other questions can come in this particular category we had seen if you are given force how to find out work done if you know work done negative of that work done will be equal to the change in uh, potential energy we have done question of that type second type of question you were given the energy function and you were asked to find out the force on that energy function to find out the partial derivative and you get the force it is not as a delta or the delta operator in maths is known as a delta operator. And let's forget delta operator. You will not be studying that in maths because that is in higher maths. Probably you will be studying in your uh, engineering colleges. Now, what else can be done? Now, third category of question that can come will be based on uh, something which I call as the potential energy. And this is more likely to come probably, it can also come in your uh, JE means. This is the potential energy graph. And these questions are uh, more likely to come in your JE means as well as in JE advance. Question based on graphs because uh, this is one type of question where uh, the examiners find it very interesting because from one question, they can ask you a variety of questions. So potential energy graph is what uh, the next category lies in and uh, there can be many questions. So please listen to this uh, lecture very carefully. There might not be everything that I say. I will be able to write it, but you have to uh, listen to it. Remember it. Note down as many things as possible. You already have this lecture. It's a very important one. And uh, we should be dealing with this potential energy graph. Now, what is this potential energy graph? This potential energy graph is uh, nothing but uh, a graph drawn between potential energy and the position of the particle. A graph drawn between potential energy and the position of the particle. Now, in most of the cases, if you are given this graph, this graph will be for a one-dimensional force or a one-dimensional 
straight line motion because to make the graph for a 2D or a 3D motion, it becomes very, very complicated. If you have terms coming from X and Y both together, it becomes a very, very difficult graph. And that is just beyond the scope of the syllabus of your exam. So even if a question comes, it will be in the category where uh, you will be given the energy position graph for a one dimensional force or a one dimensional motion. Now, how will this graph look like? I hope, uh, I hope uh, you have uh, this, uh, you have got uh, the hard copy of the sheet that we have here. I mean, do you have the hard copy of the notes with you already? This sheet that you see on your screens now, I've already sent this sheet to be distributed. The written notes, I've already sent it to you. Uh, do you have this with you, the hard copies of the notes? No, yes, yes, no. Still have it or you don't have it? Uh, this notes, do you have this note? The note that you are seeing, is this you don't have it? Okay, okay, I will find out yes, why. Yes, Vita? No, we, we didn't get it, sir. You didn't get it? Okay, there must be something uh, missing there. I will go and check it out. Don't worry, I'll make sure that you get it in a day or two. Okay, so what we are dealing with here is uh, what I call as the potential energy curve. I hope you can all see this potential energy curve. And this potential energy curve is drawn on the right-hand side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to enlarge it and uh, so that you can see it uh, bigger on your screen. And here it comes. Here it's enlarged. And what do you see here? Obviously, it's a one-dimensional motion. And in this case, this motion is along x-axis. That is why ux is written. Energy is a function of x. x is the position along x-axis. So that is plotted along y-axis, the vertical axis. And the position, which is also along x-axis, is uh, plotted on the x-axis. So horizontal axis, you are plotting the position. The x-axis, you are plotting the position. On the y-axis, on the vertical axis, you are definitely plotting the energy function. One-dimensional motion, remember that. Otherwise, it becomes too complicated to do it. Now, you can see some points here, and uh, they have drawn a random curve, very typical curve. <laughs> but just let's not concentrate on the curve. Let us see the important points. As you can see, point A, B, C, and I'll just name this point as E, point E, point D. These are some points that are drawn on this uh, particular curve. Uh, I just hope that you have drawn this curve because we will be discussing a lot on this curve. And today's class will be based basically on this curve and to understand what are the points and what are the significance of those points and which point represents what and which region represents what. If you are lucky, even the same question might come in the exam and you will be scoring a handful of marks. So I give you a minute that you draw this diagram, draw this graph between U and X. Mark the points as I have marked on the graph because uh, that is important. I'll give you a minute to that. I hope uh, you have drawn this graph, this curve or the graph. Now let us try to write uh, 
the same thing that we already know but now this is only for a one dimensional force so everything is in terms of x or y or z only so what is this graph this is a graph which is plotted between the potential energy as you can see u and the displacement you may not call it displacement you may just call it uh, the position of the particle so i've just uh, taken down the displacement and i have written it position of the particle uh, from the center of the force is not required is uh, called this uh, potential energy graph this graph shows potential energy for a one dimensional motion along x particle is moving along x position is plotted on the horizontal axis x axis energy is plotted on the vertical axis y axis we know that the negative gradient of the potential energy minus del u by del x i am only writing del x because it's a force along x axis will give you the force curve vector it is not written vector here because it's all again uh, a one dimensional motion so we'll just get the force so i i'm not writing i j k del u by del x i del u by del y j this is a one dimensional force so del minus del u by del x that will give you the force of the force acting on the particle remember this negative sign this negative sign holds a lot of importance here so basically draw this graph write it this is a one dimensional force minus del u by del x partial derivative of u with respect to x will give you the force acting on the particle negative gradient of the potential energy note this down i'll give you a minute I hope uh, you are writing. I'll give you a minute more. I see everyone writing. So basically what you got to do is just draw the graph and write minus del u by del x is the force. Negative gradient of the potential energy curve or graph gives you the force acting on the particle. This is what you need to note down as simple as that. Nothing else. I hope uh, you have written it. Can I have some reason that we have written it so that I can move forward? Okay, boys on the left, girls on the right. Everyone has done that. So we move forward and we come to the next screen. And the next screen or the next sheet that you see tells you to write the heading nature of the force. Now, how can we understand the nature of this force? Now, this is basically maths. It has got nothing to do with physics. As I said, always, uh, mathematics is the language of physics. Without maths, physics has no meaning at all. So it's all about maths that we are going to understand here and how maths and uh, physics come together. Now, whatever force you are dealing with, it could be an attractive force. It could be a repulsive force. You could either attract particles to bring them together or it could repel the particles from each other or there could not be any force so whether there is a force or not if there is a force it could be attractive it could be repulsive we all know that gravitational force is attractive that you must remember but on the other hand electrostatic force or for that matter spring force they can attract as well as repel attract means pulling back repelling means pushing back that is how you can understand attraction and repulsion in terms of spring. So spring can pull as well as push. So its pull becomes attraction and it push becomes repulsion. For gravitation, we only have attraction, we don't have repulsion. 
for electrostatic force we have attraction unlike charges attract each other like charges repel each other doesn't matter we are talking about conservative forces three forces we have to deal with it could be attractive it could be repulsive there could not be any force how do you find it out that is the question the first heading here is attractive force when is the force attractive now i'll give you a minute and i will just underline something and uh, i would ask you to understand what is being underlined i'll give you a minute oops i'm not draw, able to draw a straight line see even drawing a straight line is a big problem here i'm not able to draw a straight line things that look very simple uh, are the ones uh, which are very difficult that proves it now i'm able to draw a straight line congratulations and that's the straight line okay so i've underlined something i'll give you a minute to read it and if anyone understand what it means please raise your hands and uh, tell me what it means if you can understand it on your own well congratulations you have done a very big job and that is how you get your brains working if everything i have to tell you well i will i will tell you obviously but if you can understand it on your own without me telling you that would be an added advantage that will help you in developing your minds i'll give you a minute read the lines which i have underlined you have also need to write it so you can also write it at the same time read it write it and tell me if you understand it if anyone understand it please raise your hands i could not understand it when i was of your age and my rank in iit was 1826 so if you can understand this you are better than me Hanak has given me an answer, and uh, he is writing when displacement increases. If potential energy increases, then derivative. You are just uh, writing what is written in the. You are just. Uh, you are just uh, repeating what is written in the sheet, beta. I don't think that you understand what you are writing. See. Uh, mm, what is written in the sheet is maths you have to convert that maths into talkable language that you can talk if you can convert it into talkable language maths has already spoken you have to understand what it has spoken and then you have to make me understand what it means maths has already spoken maths is telling you this if you understand this let me know that you understand this anyone else Hanak, you have uh, attempted correctly. A nice attempt, but you are only repeating what the maths has said. I don't understand maths. So you have to tell me in my language, the language that I understand, English, Hindi. Anyone? Anyone can uh, say anything else? I think uh, you have the answer that Hanak has given us. that's on the chat i don't think the chat will be activated there the um, that that is that's right to the right there on my screen anyone else would like to do uh, would like to comment okay let me do it when do we find the force attractive when will the force be attractive no uh since we don't have any idea about uh, we have idea about gravitational energy now let us let me try to make some sense over here i'll try to 
I, I can make you understand the attractive force. If I'm able to make you understand the attractive force, you should be able to do the ulta of it and you should be able to understand the repulsive nature of the force. Okay, so I'll try to make you understand. How will I try to make you understand? Simple example, this is a pen here. This is ground here. Now, if I talk about potential energy, which point has higher potential energy? Ground or here? Which point has higher potential energy? Does the ground have higher potential energy or does this point where this pen is has higher potential energy? Which point has a higher potential energy? Tell me. Which point has a higher potential energy? This point has higher potential energy, right? Where my yes, pen is. Sir. The bottommost point is uh, M0 reference level. Then this is MGH. Now, when I drop this, what happens? It goes towards the ground, right? Yes or no? Yes, that means it is moving from a point of that means it is moving from a point of it is moving from a point of point of where point of higher potential energy to a point of lower potential energy you you know this already everything only moves from higher to lower heat always flows from higher temperature to lower temperature on its own it cannot flow from lower to higher on its own that's refrigeration i have to do some work to make it flow from lower to higher but from higher to lower it always flows on its own yes or no do you understand this Everything always moves from a point of higher energy to a point of lower energy on its own. Okay. So this pen is moving from a point of higher energy to a point of lower energy. Now take it in the other way. And this is attractive force. Do we understand this is attractive? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, we have understood this now. Now we understand what is written here. That means if I go from here to here, if I go from here to here, what is happening with potential energy? What is happening with potential energy when I go from ground? It increases. It increases. Voila. So we have understood the first line. On increasing x, if u increases. Yes or no? Yes, sir. On increasing x, distance, u increases. Now, if on increasing x, u increases and u is a function of x, that means the derivative du by dx, slope is positive, its derivative is positive, yes or no? If you increase x, u is increasing, that means the slope is positive, yes or no? Remember that slope, okay. differentiation slope, positive slope, negative slope. Slope is positive. So slope of this thing is du by dx. So that du by dx, which is the slope of this gentleman, that is positive. Slope is positive. That means f is negative because f is negative of that slope. And the force is attractive. We have understood attractive force. When is the force attractive? If one moving. When x increases, if energy increases, force is attractive. As simple as that. Do we understand this? So this has gone above our heads. That is how maths and uh, physics come into the picture. If on increasing x, energy increases. That is how you have to make it understand. Hanak has tried his best, but he was just repeating what the sheet was saying. On increasing x, if energy increases, that means the slope is positive. That means the negative of that slope is negative. And negative of that slope is force. So force is negative. That means it is attractive in nature. Done and dusted. Do we understand this? Can I have some reason that we understand this? <laughs> Everyone, uh, left boys, right girls, back, uh, back benches. Okay, so we have understood this. I hope you have written this as well. Now what we are going to do is see on the graph 
where this portion lies. See on the graph where this portion lies. And the graph comes straight away here. Can you tell me in which portion of the graph is the force attractive in nature? The graph is in front of you. It's also on your notebooks by now. Can you tell me in what region is the force attractive? I will mark it with red. So you tell me anyone in which region is the force attractive and how do you find it out? Wherever the slope is positive, force is negative and force is attractive. Which region do you find force attractive? Yes, waiting for your answers. BC. BC. Okay, I give you that. BC. Is there any other region apart from BC? Open your eyes, it's right in front of your eyes. Where the slope is positive, force is negative, and force is attractive. BC is correct. Do you find any other reason? BC and his brothers from another mother, DE. In these two regions, if X is increasing, as you can see, X is increasing, U is also increasing, whether you look at the portion BC or you look at the portion ED, in both the cases, on increasing X, U is increasing, and hence we can conclude that the force has to be attractive in these two regions, in the region from B to C, in the region from E to D. Can I have some reason that you understand this? Potential energy graph. Well done. Now, if you have understood this, and I hope you have marked this uh, region on the graph, that will take us to the second type of force, which would be definitely repulsive. And then again, I'm going to mark something here. I'm going to mark and see if you understand this repulsive force. When will the force be repulsive? I'll just underline it again. I'll just underline it again. And now again, I will ask you to read it and tell me if it makes sense. If anyone understands what is written here. If you have, attra if you have understood attractive force, repulsive force is self-explanatory. Still, I'll give you a minute. Can anyone tell me what is the meaning of whatever I have underlined? Repulsive force. When is the force repulsive? I will give you a minute to think and write first. Then we will start to make sense of that. One minute. Well, I hope uh, you have noted down what was supposed to be noted down. Uh, can anyone tell me what it means? Do anyone, does anyone understand what it means? 
Would anyone like to say anything about it? Anyone of you? Yes, beta. Beta, it's hard to hear you. Can you just speak loudly? Or is there something wrong with my headphones? No, my... Yeah. Like U is decreasing, so slope is negative. So, uh, basically what is happening uh, is uh, when I'm increasing the distance, potential energy is decreasing, right? And in that case, what happens? It is the ulta of attraction. And hence, what will happen? Negative. The uh, derivative is negative. Energy ka derivative is negative. Therefore, force becomes positive. And if the force becomes positive, it becomes repulsive in nature. That is exactly opposite of the attractive force. Now, it's difficult for me to, to make you understand the repulsive force because you have not seen repulsive force into action. So probably when you get into the standard 12th, when you get into electric charges, I will again try to make sense of this repulsive force. So when two charges are, I'll just, I'll just explain it like this. So when two charges are like, mark my words, when two charges are like, so what happens if two charges here, positive charge and positive charge, you understand charges, positive charge and positive charge. If you put two positive charges like this in space, these positive charges have energy. This system has an energy. This system of two charges has an energy. Now, when I increase the distance of these two charges, when I increase the distance between the two charges, the energy decreases. The energy decreases. The energy decreases. So basically, they are moving from a point of lower, uh, higher energy to a point of lower energy. And everything will always move from a point of higher energy to a point of lower energy higher energy to a point of lower energy and hence they will keep on moving apart since they keep on moving apart the force becomes repulsive and that is the best explanation that i can give you right now at this point in time so wherever you increase x potential energy decreases force becomes repulsive in nature i think that is much more explanation that is required since you have understood attractive force, you can just do the reverse of that and you will get into repulsive force. And I will mark this force by this legendary green color. Now, tell me in which region of this graph, which you don't see right now, but you will see it now. I just forgot it. Okay, now you tell me in which region. Yes, Hanak is trying to make some point. Hanak, you are correct now. Well done. Now it's a cakewalk A, B, and C, E. A, B, and C, E. These are the two regions where when you increase X, energy decreases. And hence, you will have repulsive forces coming into the picture. So the region from A to B or the region from C to E is the region of repulsive forces. So see, see how smart or intelligent you have become. You are just looking at the graph, looking at the graph and telling me, okay, force is repulsive here, force is attractive here, force is repulsive there, force is attractive there. Simple. Every day you learn something new. This is not something new. This you have learned in the last class. Now are you looking at the application of this thing? And that is what that makes JE fascinating. Not JE main, but JE advanced. Yes, that's what makes JE advanced fascinating because you have to apply what you have learned. And this is how you apply what you have learned. Force can be attractive, force can be repulsive. Two cases we have seen, and I hope we have understood. Can I have some raise hand that we have understood this? Anyone has any doubt? I'll uh, pause for a second or a minute so that you can ask your doubt in this particular case. Anyone has any doubt, please come up. If not, I will move ahead. No one seems interested in the doubt. I will move ahead then. If the force is not attractive, if the force is not repulsive, what could that be? 
Well, simply it could be that there is no force. If there is no force, it can't be attractive or repulsive. Zero force. When will the force be zero? When will the force be zero? Now, again, I will mark, underline, and then I'll ask you to read it and write it as well. One minute and tell me if you understand anything from this statement. If you can understand this, well, the entire chapter is uh, absolutely getting uh, crystal clear in your head and you must congratulate yourself. These are not easy stuff that I'm telling you here. Not many students in the entire uh, country would be knowing this. I can assure you that. Those who are sitting in Kota or any other fancy place, they might not be knowing this. A minute, two minutes. I hope everyone has noted it down. Can anyone explain what is written here? Can anyone explain what is written here? No one? Okay, then I'll do that. It basically tells us that if you change the value of x, you change the value of x, nothing happens. U does not change. I go up, I go down, u does not change. U does not change, that means uh, the derivative of u with respect to x is zero. Now this derivative is equal to force, that means force is zero. That means no net force works on the particle. F net is zero. The net force acting on the particle is zero. And the particle is said to be in equilibrium. Remember Newton's first law. Particle in equilibrium. When is a particle in equilibrium? If there is no force acting on the particle, it will continue its state of rest or continue its state of motion. A particle at rest will remain at rest. If it is moving along a straight line, the uniform velocity, it will keep on moving on the same line with the same velocity. Nothing happens. Force is zero. Body is in equilibrium. So when du by dx is zero, the body is in equilibrium and those points are known as points or positions of uh, equilibrium. Am I clear with this? Can I have some reason that we understand this? Points and positions of equilibrium. Boys on the left, are we there with the class? We understand the point of equilibrium? Okay, well done. Now is the time that we recognize these uh, points on our graph so that they start to look more clear in our heads. Seeing is believing? No. Can you tell me? I'll mark those points by this legendary color. Which one? Which one? Let me choose yellow. 
you will be able to see yellow no you lay yellow is not visible okay so i use this pink my i love pink pink okay which are the points that uh, you see are the points of equilibrium can you tell me anyone i hope everyone sees it right yes hana you are correct c d b c marked well done c and d and d b c and d goes the answer i think you have read it from the sheet yes one more missing e also sir that is the fourth point b c d and e the slope is zero the craft just turns the slope is zero b c d and e are the four points of equilibrium so now looking at the graph and you see that oh these are the points of equilibrium b c d and e b c d and e are the points of equilibrium where force acting on the particle is zero and now you can clearly understand them looking at the graph you can tell me those points now i'll i'll just ask you a question which about a topic which are, we are just going to do now do you find any difference between the four points do some point look similar and the other point look similar in one way or the other way there are four points remember there are four points do you find any similarity or difference between the four points where is better position yeah. sir position what uh, what do you mean by position of the points yes you are right what do you mean by position of the points two points are how higher potential energy and low well done two points are at a higher potential energy level can you mark those points which are at a higher potential energy level c and d sir c and d correct c and d are the points which are on the higher side higher potential energy remember that higher potential energy higher potential energy what about the other two b e and e are lower potential energy. b potential. and e are lower potential energy so c and d are on higher potential energy levels so we can understand that think about that somehow c and e no c and d would be similar c and d would be similar because they are on the higher level on the same hand on the same way we can see in the same way we can see b and e are on the lower potential energy side that means somehow b and e would be similar do we all understand this can i have some reason that we understand this yes sir pakka chalo that is what you needed to understand because the next heading that is coming your way deals with this specific problem and the next heading is coming right here right now on your screens and it is this types of equilibrium oops my screen went away okay back types of equilibrium so i use pink color so i use pink so what is equilibrium if the net force acting on a particle is zero it is said to be in equilibrium we all know it from very from the previous uh, chapter newton laws of motion for equilibrium du by dx is zero we now know it force is the negative uh, derivative of uh, u but the equilibrium of particle can be of Three, e four, okay. Three types. The equilibrium of the particle can be of three types, and you have to draw the entire table. So you can draw three. You can draw three columns like this. Make some rows, dung, 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 and you'll have to write and understand at the same time. So what are the three types of equilibrium? So I'll give you time to draw this graph. No, draw this uh, column and rows, and it's a big table. <laughs> So first type of equilibrium is known as stable equilibrium the second type of uh, equilibrium is known as unstable equilibrium and the third type of equilibrium is known as neutral equilibrium i'll give you a minute to draw this table i'll also show you how big the table is so you have an idea of how many rows and columns you have to draw you have to definitely draw three columns and you can see if you can see i'm just scrolling down you have to draw these many of uh, Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Let's say I count five or six. Six rows are there. So you have to draw six rows, and uh, you have to draw three columns, and you have to make you have to space them like this. 
just just do it on a fresh paper you should be able to do it so draw it i'll give you a minute for you to draw it Have you drawn the table, everyone? Okay. Have you drawn a table? You don't have to write, you just draw the cable and then when you write, you can then draw the rows. Just write the heading stable and stable neutral. And then when I explain, then you can write everything. Okay. Let's start. Let us start with the first thing. Probably we'll have to draw the table in the next class. Um, maybe we'll not have the time to draw it here because only five, ten minutes are left. It will take a take some more time. So what I'll do is uh, this is already there with you. I will again uh, share this uh, this page on your uh, group. Even if I share it, you will not be able to see it because you don't have mobile phones, right? The last uh, recall uh, the office people to give you the sheets for this. Done, beta. From the telegram, sir. Yes, yes I'll, I'll send it on the telegram. I'll send the sheet on the telegram so you can write it. You can, you can draw this table and write it in your notes before coming to class tomorrow, next class, so that I can uh, save some time on your writing. Okay. Now, how do I understand the three equilibrium? I hope you've written stable, first column, unstable, second column, and the third column, the extreme right or left, whatever it is, uh, would be your... Uh, neutral now how do we understand this now the best way to understand this is by going on to the last row and that last row consists of this example and i've always understood better from an example yes peter scroll down sir scroll down sir scroll down yes i i think you see that uh, last example right so what do you see on your screen are uh, yes peter No, no, you don't have to write. You just have to write what uh, what I am telling you. Don't worry about that. I'll give you time to write the definition. Okay, so you have stable, unstable, and neutral. Now look at this. Look at this ball. The pink one. Now this ball is at the bottom of a bowl. It could be a bowl. It could be a sphere. It could be anything. Now, if I push this ball upwards here, what happens to this ball? It goes higher up. 
it goes higher up now if it goes higher up it will automatically try to come back to its lower position yes or no if i try to push this ball or marble up it is down the hill it will go up the hill but it will always try to come back yes or no do we understand this if i push this ball it will always try to come back to its original position if i push it this side also if i push it this side also again it is moving up it is moving up it will try to come back down that means it will try to come back here do we all understand what is happening with the pink ball do we understand what is happening with the pink ball the pink ball is on the lower most position the pink ball is on the lower most position if i push it it will come back push it come back push it comes back push it comes back do we understand this this type of equilibrium is known as stable equilibrium and what is what you have to look for on a stable equilibrium stable equilibrium happens at the lower most point the energy is lowest think about potential energy it is lowest here it is lowest at the bottom if i push it potential energy increases and therefore it wants to come back so what is associated with stable equilibrium lowest energy lowest energy lowest energy do you all understand this lowest energy if you understand this now we go back 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 now we go back here now tell me which points are points of stable equilibrium which points b and e the pink points are definitely points of stable equilibrium energy is lowest see bottom of the hill bottom of the hill energy is lowest if i push it upwards it will always try to come back it will always try to come back it will always try to come back this is known as stable equilibrium b and e definitely represent stable equilibrium this is what you have to note down in your original diagram every information that we are collecting are coming from the same graph from the same one diagram so if you looking at that diagram from any perspective you should be getting your answers b and e are definitely points of stable equilibrium now let us change let us bring our uh, attention to this uh, green ball now i have a green ball now as you can see green ball is on the top of the hill it's on the top of the hill sitting on the top of the hill if you don't touch it it just remains there it will not do anything don't touch it nothing happens touch me not but if i just touch it and move it on this side it's on the top it will never come back it will just go down It will just keep on going down. It will never come back. There is no tendency of it to come back. If I push it on this side, again it is just going downhill. Bye bye, gone. It doesn't come back. It's on a point of higher energy. It will never come back to that point. It will always move to the lower point. This green ball represents. unstable equilibrium do we understand this unstable equilibrium so that is the first thing that you are going to draw or write we'll write it in the next class i'll send you the sheet on your telegram group from that note down this entire sheet note down this entire column i'll send you i'll send it to you do you understand this unstable equilibrium higher energy level unstable equilibrium higher energy level unstable equilibrium higher energy level unstable equilibrium we go back to our uh, original graphs we are doing a thorough examination of this graph and now we know a lot of things about this graph simple question 
which are the points of the green points which are the green points points mm -hmm. of unstable equilibrium and before answering before even ask, asking the question i have the answer these are the points of unstable equilibrium high energy levels top of the hill green ball is on the top of the hill as long as it remains on top nothing happens if you push it down it just goes down it will not come back now next question is where will it try to come back towards which point it is going to move if it's on the top of the hill high energy if i push it towards which point is this going to move you can see that yes sir it will go either to b or to e that means it will always move to a point of stable equilibrium so every body in this entire universe entire universe entire universe always wants to come to stable equilibrium everyone wants stability in life why are you here you want to crack je why you want to crack je you want to crack je because you want to have a good life why you want to have a good life because if you have a good life you will have stability in life stability is what everyone is looking for but stability comes with lower energy so if you want stability in life keep your energy levels down by energy level i mean the amount of money that you earn you have to come down to some certain level where you find optimum level okay this is the amount of money that i want to earn this makes my life stable i am at this energy level i don't want to go higher if i go any higher if i increase my potential energy well you will have trouble coming in your life that is like that is a philosophy i'm not a philosopher so i'll i'll just uh, concentrate on physics which i think is uh, a lot better than philosophy for me at least so now i will just bring your attention to the third type of uh, equilibrium and it is straight forward i will draw it with this legendary color blue light color blue now look at this on a flat surface this 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 marble this ball is on a flat surface if i move towards right it just stays there if i move it towards left it doesn't go down it doesn't go up it's on the same level energy does not change the red the pink ball is moving to high energy so it is coming back oh i want to come back i don't want high energy the green ball is on high energy it goes down lower energy lower energy lower energy but this blue ball which is my favorite ball just stays there so this is the this is the type of equilibrium that i want everyone you to be in neutral equilibrium just stay where you are if you have reached some pinnacle of success stay hold it down now why what happens with most of the people they are always in the green ball they are always the green ball they are always sitting on the highest point if you are on the highest point the only way you can go is down there is no way to go up because you are the highest you are at the highest energy level you have to go down that is physics that is law of the nature what i want you guys is to in, be in the blue zone make a flat surface for yourself that you don't fall how do you make this flat surface have enough friends in your life make relations you will always remain on top neutral equilibrium mixing physics with uh, a bit of philosophy help sometimes and that is how we are ending this class today what we have understood today is to find out whether a force is attractive whether a force is repulsive or whether the force is zero we know if by increasing x u increases du by dx is positive force is negative force is attractive if by increasing x u decreases du by dx is negative force is positive force is repulsive if du by dx is zero equilibrium three types of equilibrium pink one stable equilibrium you have minimum energy you will stay there you will stay stable if you have no money you will stay stable at that at that point then nothing will change it you will just stay there green ball which everyone wants to aspire to be on the top of the pile but if you are on the top of the pile the only way you can go is go down unstable equilibrium i don't want you to be there the third one is the best one the neutral one you stay on top you reach the top you stay on top create a flat surface always stay there forever that ends today's class i hope you enjoyed it i enjoyed it if you have anything that you want to ask i uh, please let me know very much enjoyed sir great see i always try to do something new so what i'm going to do is uh, share this uh, share this uh, sheet with you on your telegram group
make the entire table on your own because if you make it we will save a lot of time in the class that can be utilized for something else so bye for now and uh, take care study and do the job i am just going to send it right now in 2 minutes that sheet will be there on your telegram group have a look at that sheet and uh, use it take care have a good day and uh, stay uh, healthy beta the the climate is changing very fast i mean it's already 3 or 4 degrees here at my place i hope uh, i don't see you with sweaters and all that that means it's not so cold there it's very cold over here so stay healthy and uh, take care i am here if you are anything you can ask else the class is dismissed stay happy bye sir